Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant, and this is the news from Gyeonggi Province this week. Gyeonggi Province recently announced plans to temporarily close medical and residential facilities for individuals, including seniors and those with disabilities, who are more susceptible to COVID-19 infection in groups. Referred to as a preventive cohort isolation, this initiative aims to proactively prevent the spread of this virus among such individuals. This measure seeks to address the tendency of this virus to spread rapidly within cohort groups. The subjects of the closure include dormitory-type care facilities for seniors, as well as those for individuals with physical or mental disabilities. At the determination of facility heads, personnel should also be isolated within the facility together with users, while visitor access will be strictly prohibited and all incoming items sterilized. Kyungi Province plans to compensate these facilities for losses stemming from their isolation. Since preventive isolation is a recommended condition, Gyeonggi Province will encourage many facilities to participate in this plan and shall extend the isolation period and facility coverage as necessary. Those facilities that cannot close immediately will still prohibit access by visitors and undertake the isolation of personnel outside of their working hours. At a press conference on February 27th, Kyungi Province announced that it will continue to reduce documentary requirements for civil applications so as to simplify procedures while reducing document preparation efforts for residents. Last year, Kyungi Province processed a total of 1.9 million civil applications, which is equivalent to approximately 5,000 applications daily. These applications typically require the submission of supporting documents. Document reduction will concentrate on applications that require complicated document preparation efforts. Last year, the province identified approximately 400 unnecessary documents for various civil application types. Of these, 148 have been simplified through the reduction of documentary requirements. These documents have been replaced by information accessible via provincial computer networks or simply deleted from the lists of required documents. Gyeonggi Province also simplified application channels. Applications for youth basic income and postnatal care support can now be made through the 24-hour Gyeonggi Public Service System. Four types of documents, including resident registration certificates, are no longer required for civil applications, thereby reducing document preparation time and costs for applicants. 아직 현장에는 여전히 도민에게 큰 불편을 주는 민원 서류가 있을 것으로 생각되기 때문에 앞으로 도민의 불편한 발걸음이 없도록 어, 경기도 민원 서류 어, 서류 줄이기를 지속적으로 어, 추진해 나가겠습니다. By the end of the year, Gyeonggi Province will complete the establishment of the 24-hour Gyeonggi Public Service System for the online processing of more than 50 types of civil applications and will expand related services thereafter. Gyeonggi Province began receiving applications for this year's first quarterly youth basic income payments. The application deadline is April 1st. 24-year-old Kyunggi residents who were born between January 2nd of 1995 and January 1st of 1996 and who have lived in the province continuously for more than three years or collectively for more than 10 years can apply. Applications are being received online through the related website. All that is required is the completed application form and a copy of the resident registration certificate. Payments in the amount of 250,000 Korean won will be made from April 20th in Gyeonggi local currency. Since related policy was introduced by Gyeonggi province last September, the number of driver licenses voluntarily surrendered by seniors has exceeded 
20,000. This policy is geared to reduce traffic accidents by encouraging drivers who are more than 65 years of age to return their driver licenses. The number of fatal accidents involving senior drivers actually fell by 5% during the first four months of this policy's implementation. Gyeonggi Province is rewarding those who return their driver licenses with local currency. The province has set aside 2 billion Korean won for such payments this year. From March 4th, the Gyeonggi COVID-19 response team will provide residents with detailed information on current circumstances through regular briefings. During the March 4th briefing, it was disclosed that some patients in serious condition were transported from Daegu Metropolitan City and North Gyeongsang Province and admitted to hospitals in Gyeonggi. As of March 4th, there were 102 confirmed COVID-19 cases in the province. Of these, nine individuals have been discharged from hospitals, while 92 were receiving treatment in isolation. The cases were identified in 18 areas of the province, with Suwon City having the largest number with 18 cases. While there were 10 patients from other regions receiving treatment in Gyeonggi Province, Additional patients in serious condition from Daegu and North Gyeongsang Province were admitted to provincial hospitals on March 4th. As of March 4th, there were 53 negative pressure beds available in the province. In order to overcome projected shortage, Gyeonggi Province disclosed that it will introduce a two-track method to improve the management efficiency of these beds. While disclosing detailed response measures, Gyeonggi Province also revealed its own patient health management system. <laughs> The province also plans to develop patient health management criteria and a related database. The province also revealed plans to launch home health management services for mild cases. Furthermore, Gyeonggi Province will hold regular COVID-19 briefings hosted by specialists at 3 p.m on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week. The first briefing on March 4th was conducted by a joint chief of the Gyeonggi COVID-19 Emergency Response Team. With the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases mounting, Gyeonggi Province announced that it has appointed 59 additional inspectors from among public health center doctors. These new inspectors will undertake in-depth investigations and on-site responses upon request by the province while performing their normal duties. With this enhanced inspection capability, Gyeonggi Province will be able to handle new confirmed cases more swiftly while preventing the spread of the disease more effectively. The Korean government recently announced plans to compensate landlords who reduce rents for small businesses during the COVID-19 outbreak. Compensation will be made for half of reduced rent amounts in the form of income tax breaks and corporate tax exemptions. There are an increasing number of landlords who have joined this movement, also known as the Kind Landlord Movement, in Gyeonggi Province. In Guri traditional market, landlords of 40 out of 180 commercial buildings have reduced rents by up to 30 percent. Such compassionate actions are welcomed by market merchants. 임대료를 이렇게 인하해 주신 바람에 우리 상인들도 굉장히 힘이 됩니다. 건물주님께 다시 한번 감사드리면서. 어, 우리 상인들도 더욱 힘을 내서 어, 이 어려움을 어, 극복하겠습니다. In Paju City, 10 landlords of 13 commercial buildings in a large shopping center that houses more than 180 shops also promised to reduce rents 
for their tenants. 더 많은 사람들이 우리 마을에서만이라도 100% 또는 뭐 하여튼 목표지까지 가서 모든 사람이 같이 상생하는 데 협력해서 우리가 이 어려움을 극복해 나가면 좋겠고 There was even a landlord who waived rents for a month as the number of shop owners considering business closure increased. 지금 나라 전체가 힘드니까 누구나 다 힘든데요. 저희도 사실은 힘들어요. 그런데 이제 다 같이 힘을 합해서 어 어려움을 이겨 나가야 된다는 마음으로 참여하게 됐고요. The rent reduction movement is also spreading to traditional markets and shopping centers in the cities of Suwon and Shihung. 경기도에서도 선한 건물주 운동이 경기도 전역에 퍼져 나갈 수 있도록 경기도 상인 연합회, 경기도 소상공인 연합회, 골목상권 상인회 등과 함께 홍보 캠페인과 함께 공동 노력을 다해 나갈 계획입니다. Gyeonggi Province is also considering rent reductions for tenants of public properties and provincial organization properties. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.